If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I post a new Tom Brady video every day. What's it feel like to get yelled at by Tom? He's never yelled at me. I mean, I feel like he knows that like Chris is a defensive player and quite personally, it's not that important. Like I got to yell at Jules. Yeah. What, what's that you know, feel like? He used to get on me like like an older brother, but I like I was the kind of guy that he could get on, you know, because it was tough for him. He, when I was young, he used to get on me real hard because we had a connection with the Bay Area. We have the same representation with agents with being doing sports, you know. So like we had like kind of a, a little thing, but like I wasn't like a stud yet. So like if I didn't do something exactly right, like he would like fully like come on, Jules. Mm -hmm. you know, like hit, hit the high octave mm -hmm. but you know w w as I got older he would yell at me and I would kind of like yell back if I, if it was like not like prohibited like if if, oh. if, it wasn't, if if this wasn't meant to be yelled at I'm like bro you can't yell at me for this like but he used to like to yell at me because I think he couldn't yell at other guys because they would tank if they did right. you know what I mean right. he's so He's like, these guys have been watching him since they were like two years old. I was watching him since I was like 13. You know what I mean? Like they would fully like tank and quit or get their feelings hurt. If a guy like Tom Brady gets on you and just starts yelling at you. Have, so like have, he's very good with who he could yell at and who he couldn't yell at. He made everybody feel special. Like, you know, when a lot of times uh, the media or certain powers that be was trying to make it like it was just Tom, he would immediately diffuse that. Morning. Uh. Brady shared his first ever Hollywood cameo with his close friend, safety lawyer Malloy. <laughs> you like that, huh? And in June of 2002, Damn. the Super Bowl MVP was sure to make time for one of the men most responsible for his success. I was supposed to get out uh, of the hospital on Saturday afternoon after a Friday operation, if all went well. And he was stopping by on Saturday morning to see me. It's too early for cameras. And when he walked in, I was in intensive care in critical condition. The picture painted was not a rosy picture, but Tommy, he actually, had, you know, stayed for most of the next 48 hours until uh, family members could arrive. Complications following gastric bypass surgery forced Charlie Weiss in and out of a coma for the next seven days. His hospital visit ultimately required more than two months of recovery. There, throughout it all, was his young quarterback. Tommy was one of the reasons why I got back to work quicker than than you normally would because of his pushing, and I think that mentally and emotionally he was a big, you know, a big uplifting uh, person for me. Our personal relationship and our professional relationship now became one, which I think allowed us to evolve together and move along qu at a quicker pace than it might have originally. Weiss returned to the sideline by the start of the 2002 regular season. Have you ever gotten a sorry about earlier, Bubs? No, nah, but he used, to, <laughs> he used to give me the, you know, he, I, he'd get on me hard when I was young. I remember he goes, you know, if, if I yell at you, you know I love you. And I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> And he'd be like, I, I, then I'd be like, you must, you must really love me then. Or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he yelled at me. It's so true, it's so true though. Because I used to sit next to him before they broke, they, they, they separated us after like a few years because, you know, like they can't have too good of friends in yeah, class. Yeah, dicking off in the front <laughs> row, dude. You know I mean? So they, 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 it's like the classroom in eighth grade. They <laughs> sit next to your boy and put us <laughs> in the ends. But, uh, I'd sit there and I'd be all like, like beat down, like little puppy, like terrified, like I'm going to get cut and stuff like my first or second year. <clears throat> and he, he would sit next to me and he goes, you know, if I, if I, if I yell at you, buddy, that means I love you. 
at some point, if you lose that quarterback mm -hmm. who was your buffer in the locker room, right. who kept everybody it, it, to a low roar, mm -hmm. like everybody was upset with, with a lot of things Bill Belichick did, but Tom would say, no, just just can it. Just, right. just keep it to mm -hmm. yourself because yeah. we can win in spite of him. Correct. Right? Okay. But when you have a guy like that, you have a Peyton Manning, you have one of these, gener these historically transcendent yep. quarterbacks, you, he can overcome a lot. Okay. And that's what Coach Belichick relied on. He Coach Bel he was able to treat everybody else like that because he treated Tom like that. And people like, well, if Tom don't say nothing, Skip, how can I say something? Everybody talks about when they would go in there try to get their contract, he said, well, we pay Tom this. We yep. can't pay you more than Tom. That is correct. And there's also the anecdote that Tom finally threw up his hands and said, I keep taking team discounts. Thank you. You know, hometown discounts. And yet I have no input into how the team is being Thank you. built. Yes. And it's the Aaron Rodgers dilemma. Right. But they gave Aaron, they tossed him some bones. Yes. Randall Cobb. Right. We'll let you do this. Right. You know, we'll give you some of the play calling, whatever. No, no, not there. <laughs> Tom is like, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm, pl I'm pl playing for pennies on the dollars. And you treat me like this? That's what happened. Wait, wait a minute. What's wrong with this picture? Okay. The heartstrings of New England were tugged unexpectedly just five days before the first game of 2003. A real stunner from the Patriots. Today, the team cut Lawyer Malloy, one of their most popular players. His locker was already bare by the time the media got to the locker room late this morning. Today's move makes Malloy an unrestricted free agent. You'd like to say that a team as professional as, as the Patriots would have been able to handle the release of Lawyer but remember now, this is one of Tommy's closest friends. He showed up every day, never missed the game, never missed a practice, never complained. Lloyd was one of those players that we loved on the team. Now we can get off the rock. But to see him go was like a part of, you know, all of us leaving as well. Everyone was hurt and stunned by it because I thought that it was going to be, you know, Lloyd and myself as the safeties back there, I was looking forward to it. That was one of the reasons why I signed with New England. So what was the outcome in Robert Kraft's view of the Super Bowl? Wait a second. Our defense with no Malcolm Butler allowed Nick Foles to become the MVP mm -hmm. by scoring 41 points yeah. in a Super Bowl mm -hmm. while Tom threw up for a playoff record, not a Super Bowl, an all-time playoff record, 505 yards. We put up 33 and we lost by eight points. Right. Kraft had to be incensed. Brady had to be completely over the edge. Yes. That was when Brady came out and did the Q&A with uh, yep. Jim Gray at the, uh, the Santa, Santa Monica. Monica uh, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, it was an appearance right. that he made mm -hmm. at a conference, mm -hmm. right? And remember what he was saying that, right. uh, you, you know, I, I plead the fifth yep. about my happiness. Do you feel appreciated yeah. sometimes? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Okay. So here's, here's the other big takeaway from this book that is shocking to me. They came back the next year in 2018 when Tom didn't want to play there anymore. And Tom rose above all that mm -hmm. and led that team into the AFC Championship game at Mahomes Boy. Yep. And remember what happened in overtime? Again, Patrick didn't get the ball. Right. Tom got the ball. Right. And Tom converts three straight third and tens in the cold and the wind in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. One to Edelman, two to Gronk. They pull it off. They go right down the field and score a touchdown, which ended the game. And they go to the Super Bowl. Tom didn't play very well, but he never plays very well against that Ram defense, right? right? Mm -hmm. And Jared Goff played worse. And I give Bill credit for his defensive game plan. But, but the quarterback on the other side was about to eventually not be the quarterback right. because they just didn't love him at mm -hmm. all. Right. So Tom did what he always does. He had a game-winning drive in the middle of the fourth quarter, and they won a Super Bowl right. in spite of all this right. chaos that right. was swirling behind closed doors in New right. England. That's shockingly great to me. Yeah, and that just goes to show you that Tom was willing to put that aside and do what's best for the best interest of the team and try to win a game, even though I'm not so sure. I don't want to use the word despise, but I think I would like to say he had a strong disliking for his head coach. Tom, how, uh, how close were you with John Madden? What did he mean to you? I obviously got to know him for a long period of time doing, um, you know, bits being in the sport and um, a lot of production meetings with him and shot commercials together. So a lot, I just had a lot of respect for him and what he meant to the game as a head coach and as an analyst. Um, you know, it's kind of this uh, amazing football legend 
Um, I mean, he meant a lot to the game. I think he entertained a lot of people. He brought a lot of joy to people's lives. So he was a, a great man, lived a great life. What happens when guys are competitors? You don't go to the Pro Bowl anymore, but they get to know yeah. you and they like you. Does it change? Does it change their ferocity when they're playing? I kind of feel that way about them too. You know, a lot of them I don't like either. So, and then I get to be on their <laughs> team and, and I kind of like them like Sherm, man. Sherm, I was, no, no, not that I didn't like him. He was a, uh, you know, Sherm's had an incredible career. I actually really have enjoyed my time with him. And Dominican Sue, I mean, he was after me for a long time. And now that he's my teammate, I love having him on my team. So, you know, that's just the way it is. JPP, another one, he, he got after me for a long time. Now I'm his teammate. So, um, it's really unique. You know, I think there's a great respect that we all have for one another when we meet and we, you know, ultimately get to know each other. And it's just, uh, we're all after the same thing. That's part of the competition. You know, we're all after that one thing that's really important. I said to my friend the other day, you know, second place is the same as 32nd in the end. So if you're not first, you're last. That's a Ricky Bobby line. Uh, he thought in your first Super Bowl, you guys should have played for overtime. And Charlie said he talked to him, joked about it afterwards. And did you ever get a chance to talk to him about going for the win and actually getting the W? I never did. No, but I obviously remember, you know, it kind of uh, set the stage for us. You know, the fact that he thought, okay, we should not go down and try to score. But um, it was pretty cool, you know, to be able to do it. And then, you know, it was a great time in our life. Uh, it was a long time ago, but that was a very great memory. And again, I think he was such a monumental figure in the league. And, uh, you know, anytime you had a production meeting with him, you were on your, you know, you were on your stuff. You wanted to go out there and help him do the best he could do too. That's it for this video. I post a new Tom Brady video every day. So please like and subscribe. That way you always have a new Tom Brady video to watch every single day. Thanks for watching.